be here at our event, Governor Corzine, uh, and uh, President Fox, with a very nice introduction, and also um, conference chairs, uh, Bill Dressel and John Um Let's see, it's good it's on. Uh, I wanted to talk about laying the foundation for not a generation, but a century of clean energy jobs. We have an opportunity to lead the world in what has to be a new industrial revolution, a revolution that gives us uh, clean energy, uh, the energy we want without uh, putting a dent in our economy. And it's because of several things. We want to decrease our dependency on foreign oil. We want to mitigate against climate change. And uh, we want to ensure our future prosperity. Very briefly, uh, we've become increasingly dependent on importing foreign oil, roughly 60% of our oil now comes abroad. It's only since the late 1940s that we actually began to import oil. Before that, we're an oil exporting country. And this is hundreds of billions of dollars a year going abroad and finding its way, you know, sometimes to people who don't really like us. Um, so that's all I want to say about this. Uh, we have a mechanism for getting around that. Now, I'm going to I've inserted a few slides to tell you about climate change. I know I'm preaching to the choir, but uh, sometimes the choir needs a refresher. <laughs> uh, here is uh, the most recent records of, of the temperature change. Uh, and there's been a lot of hullabaloo recently in the press and among op-ed columnists that you notice in the last five, eight years, the temperature has plateaued and there might be a sign that's going down. And so many people say, aha, it's a hoax. Um, well, it's actually gone down in the past history by 10, 20 years. And so we, while we are in the process of trying to understand the details of these ripples, it's fair to say that they have been rippling. And no uh, self-respecting scientist would have ever said uh, we have climate change based on a record of only 20 or 30 years. It's 150 and several hundred year records, uh, which convince us that something is happening. So, another question that I hear often uh, amongst yeah. certain people in Washington is, well, that's all fine and good, but the humans didn't really cause climate change. So, here, here's some evidence that shows you why we think it's caused by humans. The black curve are the observations from 1900 to uh, 2005, and the blue are Computer models of what the climate should do if you include all the solar variations, all the volcanoes, all the things that were not caused by humans. And what they found is they can't really fit the models. But what they didn't include is the greenhouse gases that have occurred since the beginning of the Industrial Revolution. These greenhouse gases are very, very clearly associated with human activity because they're actually altering the isotopic abundance of the carbon in the atmosphere. Once you have fossil fuel in the ground, the carbon-14 that's made from cosmic rays decays away. You burn fossil fuel, you're decreasing the amount of radioactive carbon in the atmosphere. And so it's not just because it's a coincidence that carbon started increasing since the beginning of the Industrial Revolution. That's a smoking gun. You actually can see the bullet. Uh, and so if you put in the fact that humans have increased greenhouse gases, then you get a reasonable fit. And so it's evidence like this that have really convinced scientists uh, that this is true. Now, uh, here in Washington and uh, in other parts, but mostly in Washington, people say, well, yeah, but you haven't included sunspots or the variation in the sun. Well, I, I point back to the natural variations included that, but they say they don't really believe it. So uh, let's look at specifically, the solar activities such as sunspots really account for the rise in temperature. So here's a more recent, uh, it's more recent because now I'm using satellite data. And so in the more recent past, you see an increase in the temperature. And the sun's intensity actually does vary. It's at about an 11-year cycle. But the time average is flat. So you can even convince yourself, perhaps, that these slight ripples in the sun's intensity are somewhat correlated to these slight ripples that you see here, the time average ripples. And it, it, there's some truth in that, although we don't fully understand it. But then you say, aha. Well, what about sunspots? Well, it turns out, and I don't know if you can see this, the yellow is the irradiance, that's the visible light, which is given by this curve. And the sunspot observations are in blue, the solar flares, and green, the, the microwaves in purple. They all 
track each other beautifully. They all vary together. The average flux remains constant over the 30-year period. It goes up and down. So, um, so what I'm trying to do here in my uh, job at Sector of Energy is something pretty novel. Instead of talking about whether it's true or not, I actually to introduce data. <laughs> absolutely true that the um, climate of the Earth has changed over the last uh, actually tens of hundreds of millions of years. This is some data taken from uh, Antarctica over the last 420,000 years, and it shows the temperature, the carbon dioxide, and the methane all track beautifully. And so certainly during this period you couldn't blame anything on humans. So why is there a concern? Well, the concern is right now the CO2 level is up here. It's not only gone off the scale of the last 420,000 years, it's gone off the scale in the last two million years. And it's up here, but it's actually, in the best scenario, it will go far, it will go off the scale of the slide, it will go to about one and a half times the height of the slide. In the best scenario, the worst scenario, more than double the height of the slide. So this is what we're up against. Now, let me also remind you, in the coldest of the ice ages, let's say six degrees centigrade colder, which doesn't sound like much. Six degrees centigrade, heck, weather in New Jersey changes by that in a day. What's all the hullabaloo about? On a world average, six degrees means where we are in the present day to a cold part of the Ice Age. During these parts of the Ice Age, all of Canada, the United States, South Ohio, Pennsylvania are covered year round in ice. So, six degrees centigrade, world average, has a very profound effect on the climate of the world. So, a six degree positive change, or even a four degree positive change, will have an incredibly <coughs> profound effect on the world. So, this is the dice we are rolling today. In a business as usual scenario, if we continue to do what we are continuing to do today, the world over, there's a 20% chance we will go over six degrees centigrade, and a greater than 50% chance we'll go over four and a half to five degrees centigrade. So four and a half to five degrees going the other way where we have some geological history uh, it will be a very profound change. And so it's, it goes a little bit beyond the modest adaptation discussions that I hear about if, if um, you know, the Midwest becomes a desert, for example. This, this, these, are the, these are the things at stake. Notice I'm not saying there's a 100% probability this is going to happen. And so just think of it this way. You're on an airplane. Announcement over the speed for phone. You know, there's a thank you for flying such and such airline. Uh, there's a 50% chance their airplane will crash. <laughs> you would take action. <laughs> okay, so um, let me make a few other predictions that are pre pretty safe. I think the price of oil will come up, go up in the coming decades uh, just because of supply and demand, because oil exploration is now going offshore to much more expensive recovery to tar types of oil, tar sands, things of that nature. So the price of actual recovery is going to go up. Meanwhile, the demand is going to go up because it, it's become quite compelling to every scientist that I know has really looked at the data uh, that um, we're going to be living in a carbon-constrained world, that these issues that we're now facing are very, very serious. So these are two predictions. And so, so we have a decision. We can say, well, maybe the price of oil will go back to $30 a barrel and life will be good again. Or maybe this is all, not hoax, but let's just say uh, some misguided scientists and they, they're wrong and um, things are okay. Or you can say, those are highly unlikely. This is the way the world's going to be. How should the United States position itself in this world? So that reminds me of uh, a uh, question that they asked the great hockey player uh, Wayne Gretzky. Um, why was Wayne Gretzky such a good hockey player? So he said, well, I skate to where the puck is going to be, not where it's been. <laughs> and so that's something we should keep in mind you know, for the future path of the United States. Now, how are we, we, in which way are we skating? 